Morning, First Love family. Hope you're doing well this morning. I am doing well this morning. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to be in First John still today. Um, First John chapter 5. We're going to go back to verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. And that, that follows along with what Jude says. Keep, keep yourself in the love of God, praying always in the Holy Spirit. It's like there's... There's a lot of keeping ourselves that is, even though we have the Holy Spirit to guide us and guard us and keep us and instruct us and, and convict us of sin when we fail, but there's a, a proactive co-action with God in which we have a huge part to play. And that's why, you know, and I, I, I quote this all the time, walk circumspectly not as fools because the days are evil. You know, there's things we have to keep our eyes on the prize. We can't become complacent. We can't become uh, lackadaisical. We have to be vigilant. We have to be on point. He says, uh, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. <clears throat> I love that because uh, he who has been born of God keeps himself. And that, that means that there's a lot of self-examination going on, a lot of inventories that we take of ourselves going on, that, you know, that we are aware, that we've got our eyes on our, 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 where our footsteps are. We've got our eyes on the prize as well. He who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. You know, when we see that, when, when it talks about we have an adversary, the devil roaming to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom we may devour, um, like a roaring lion, he roams to and throw throughout the earth. I think that while sometimes I, I believe that he's more attentive to like the pastors and the leaders and the, because if he can take out a pastor, he can take out a whole lot of people. That 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 causes the whole root of hypocrisy to be uh, to be lauded in the church. Like oh, look at those Christians are nothing but hypocrites, that pastor was sleeping with his secretary, or whatever. But then sometimes I think, you know, when the devil sees somebody who is really serious about their walk with Christ, who really has their eyes on the prize, I think maybe, no, I know, he recognizes the power, and maybe he takes another street. Maybe he goes down another sidewalk. Because when you see the power of the Holy Spirit working in someone's life, alive, well, moving, shaking, you know, the devil knows the Word of God. And in the Word it says that, you know, you do well if you believe, but even the de demons believe and tremble. The demons believe and tremble. Don't you want to be the one that makes the demons tremble? Don't you want to be the one whose truth is so in your face that the demons tremble? So it goes on and says, We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. He crosses the street. He crosses the street. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And there's a contrast that we have to grasp. We need to understand that, look, we are of God. We are of God. We're separated. Hagios. We're separated. But the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. But we're of God. And we understand this and we understand the power that is in that. Because it says this, and we know the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. You know, when it says that we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. This is just a true fact. You don't have to look far to see the sway of the wicked one um, just completely gobbling up our culture and our society and, and the humanness that uh, 
you know, the, the, the good part of our humanness that, that is being perverted and, and, and taken out, out and taken down and, and destroyed. We see these things, but we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. So we know that we are of God and we know that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we also know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. That understanding is privy. Privy to those that are saved. Privy to those who by their belief in the Son of God and the salvation available through his name have been given the right to call ourselves and to be called the sons and daughters of God. What a what a privilege, what an honor to be so separated from the world that, that while the whole world is under the sway of the wicked one, we have the privilege and the honor of being called the sons and daughters of God. That's a whole separate thing, isn't it? That's a whole different world. We live in a different world. We've been set apart. We've been separated from this world. But guess what? It says here, that we keep ourselves, that we keep ourselves. So, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. How, how hard do we hold on to that understanding? Do we embrace that understanding Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and, and then we let it kind of ride in, in the trunk for the rest of the week or the beginning of the week or or do we stay spicy do we stay spicy do we stay moved do we stay in that passion and purpose passion propelled purpose that God provides for us because it, it, we know that the son of God has come and given us an understanding What is that understanding? An understanding of who we are and who the world is and the difference between those two things. Giving us an understanding, an understanding of the difference between the things of the world and the things of the Spirit. And the reason is that we may know Him who is true and therefore we are in Him who is true. And He puts a pinpoint on who that is. In His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. The world is out there trying to tell us all kinds of different things about who God is, what God does, what we do as a result of our relationship with God. And and the only truth is that we may know him as true, that we are in him as true in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And then he finishes this passage by saying, little children... Keep yourselves from idols. Got to do that, man. And idols come in all shapes and sizes. Anything that takes your mind off of the true purpose of your life in Christ is potentially an idol. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Mighty King, mighty God, mighty Savior, mighty Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy poured out upon us. Thank you that your tender mercies are fresh every morning, Lord. You are a mighty King, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I will see you tomorrow, and I love you very much. God bless. I was a dead man walking until you left this day. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.